Well, a very good morning to everyone watching on YouTube. Great to have you with us. I know that God has something special for you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Give yourself a hand clap for being in the church this morning. Come on, just greet someone next to you or behind you, and then you can take your seats. My sermon title this morning is Go Again, Go Again. We have no quit in us as the church. Go again. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. Open our ears, Father, that we may hear what your word is, what your spirit is saying to the church. Open our eyes that we may see things the way you see them, Father. Realign our hearts and our expectations to align with your promises and your word. Our hearts belong to you. And may your precious word, the seed, fall on good ground. May it shoot root and grow into a mighty tree and bear much fruit for your kingdom, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. When you have an expectation and it doesn't happen, you get disappointed. And when that process happens over and over, over again, disappointed, disappointment, disappointment, because you had an expectation, you had your hope set on something, the Bible says that your heart grows sick. You have an expectation, didn't happen, disappointment. You feel bitter, you feel sad, you hope again, it doesn't happen again, you get bitter again. And so your heart over a period of time gets sick. And that is why the Bible wants us to have an accurate expectation. What kind of expectation should we have in life? And our expectations toward God, His Word, His promises. I mean, many of you this morning have an expectation concerning the church. On what is our expectations based what are we really looking for and hoping for and expecting to see in a service or in CRC or in a home cell or with a pastor or with a leader or with your job? Our entire life is based on certain things we expect and we need to ask ourselves, on what foundation are we expecting these things? Because if it's on a wrong foundation, you will be disappointed and your, disappoint your disappointment will be guaranteed. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12, Hope the first make the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. The moment that expectation is met, it's like a tree of life, the Bible says. But if this expectation is not met, your heart grows sick. When we have the wrong expectations, we are guaranteed a sick heart. But when our expectations is accurate and in line with the Bible, it will be a tree of life. When you live a life by faith where your hope where your hope is placed on Jesus, you are promised victory, success, and prosperity. If your hope is set on Christ and your hope is set on the Word and we follow Christ and we obey His Word, we are guaranteed success in this life. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you can obey God's Word but God decides if He's going to bless you or not. God's blessing is not decided by who you are. God's blessing is attached by His Word. God doesn't bless the wicked and blesses the righteous. The Bible says God scatters the, the, the wicked and God adds to the righteous. God is not fighting against His church. There's a promise and a blessing and a reward that we receive when we obey God. And there's a curse for turning your back on God. God doesn't bless those that has turned their back on Him. That's the wicked. That's the world. Don't let anyone tell you there's no reward in following Jesus Christ. There's a massive reward in following in Him. This, this book produces life. You can run your marriage like you feel, or you can run your marriage according to the Bible. One produces life. The other one produces a curse. You can run your business according to how you feel, or you can run your business according to God's Word. One will produce life, and the other one will produce a curse. When you follow God, your life changes for the better. 
You don't follow Jesus and your life goes down the drain. Your life gets better. Peace enters your heart. Joy enters your heart. There's a blessing that rests on you and your wonderful family. There's a protection, a hedge of protection around, around you. You have been blood washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Condemnation has been taken away. The world that doesn't have it is condemned. Condemned in sin. Sin destroys family. Don't let anyone ever tell you, well, it's just a small. Sin destroys people's lives and people's career. There's a curse when you follow Satan. There's a blessing when you follow Jesus. This means in this life, Jesus has given us his mind. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. He has given us his power, his spirit. He has given us his grace, his wisdom, and his word so that we can never go through this life and receive the promises that he has given us, making good decisions every day and choosing life every day. We're all sitting here today because of choices we have made. You are where you are because of decisions, because of choices. And those decisions was either based on God's Word, or it was based on our emotion, or it's based on wrong information that someone told us, listen to this, this, and that. But life is based on choices. Following Jesus and obeying His Word produces a blessed life. And Jesus has promised us victory. He did not promise us a trial and tribulation free life. He has promised us victory. He did not promise us a trial and tribulation free life. And this is the message that I have for you this morning. What is your expectation concerning this life, concerning God, concerning victory, concerning the blessing, concerning trials and tribulations? Because if we have the wrong expectation, our hearts will grow sick. Then you meet Christians that says, oh, where was God when that happened? Why didn't God do that? Why didn't God heal over here? Why didn't God protect me over there? Then we have bitter Christians because they are bitter towards God, bitter towards the church, bitter towards other Christians because their hope was deferred and their hearts grew sick. And if we have the right expectation and we know what we are in for, our hearts and our life will become like a tree of life, a big tree. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 14 verse 19 to 23. Tell your neighbor, I am blessed. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. They thought Paul was dead. He was not moving. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. And the next day he departed with departed with Barnabas and De De Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must go through many tribulations and enter the kingdom of God. So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they have believed. A very powerful chapter, a very powerful few verses. Here the Apostle Paul is doing the Lord's work by preaching and trying to save as many souls as he can and people want, wanted to kill him. People wanted him dead. The blessed man of God, the anointed man of God, a man on a mission, a man of a, on an assignment, a man that saw Jesus suddenly was stoned, almost stoned to death. You might feel like that this morning. You are busy with the Lord's work. You are running your business at full capacity to fund the end time revival, to build this beautiful building on the outside. And it feels like that you've been stoned. Sometimes we feel like we are dying on the inside because of attacks, because of trials and tribulations. And people think that you're dead, think it's over with your business. They think it's over with your marriage. They drag your life outside of the city and says, well, that's corpse. Well, at least that, that, you know, he tried. 
You are serving in church, serving in the band, serving as an usher. You are giving finances to the project. You are running home sales and structures and raising up leaders and doing everything you can and it feels all hell broke loose in your life. But Jesus, you said I must preach the gospel. Now they don't repay me with an offering, they repay me with stones. They don't like me, they unlike me on Facebook. I mean, Paul got stoned. Today people receive negative comments on social media and they die on the inside. We went from men to, I don't know what we, you know, I don't know what happened, but we are, are very sensitive people in these last days. Sensitive about everything. Because somehow we've got the wrong expectations concerning life. Because if I have Jesus, life must be pain-free, trial-free, tribulation-free, attack-free. It must just work out for me. God loves me. God has given me grace. He's going to open this door and I'm just going to waltz through it. He's going to make that crooked way straight and it's going to be easy. We have an expectation that God is going to wave His hand in our life and there's going to be no battles, no Goliaths, no lion pits, no fiery furnaces. There will be absolutely no attacks. Here Paul is doing what the Lord has called him to do and he's being attacked for it. Satan knows that you've been anointed as a businessman to fund the kingdom of God and is going full hellfire on your business. When there's an attack like that, what do we tend to do? Where are you, God? Or we judge ourselves. Talk moes ek gekyk het, talk moes ek gedink het, talk moes ek die feinskrif gelees het. Talk as ek het ek a fout gemaakt. Maybe I was confused, maybe I didn't listen properly. Or we're going on a blaming game and we blame God, blame others, blame the church, blame economy, blame the ANC, and we blame everyone else to try and make sense of the war, the battle, or the trial of tribulation you find yourselves in. And here Paul is doing a good work and he gets rewarded with blood on his face, receiving stones to his head. They hated him and the word that he preached and tried to kill him. They stoned him to such an extent they thought he was dead. Paul wasn't limping away. He was lying on the ground like a dead man. Pastor, where was God's protection when it came to Paul? A very good question. A soldier that's wounded in a war and did not die will say God has protected him and saved his life. A soldier at war that got shot and did not die will say that God has protected him in the field of battle. But someone that's on a cruise ship that gets shot will have a very different opinion of what should have happened. One has an expectation that it must be easy on the cruise ship. The other one had an expectation that I'm in a war and there's going to be casualties. Someone is about to get shot. Someone can die. But nonetheless, we will advance even while the bullets are flying our direction. What is an expectation of advancing and, and, and uh, uh, obtaining, obtaining ground and, and, and forcing their dominion and their rule and reign onto another city and country? The other one is sipping pina coladas next to the swimming pool. There should be no guns. And in the minds of many Christians, life is a cruise ship. Everything must just go well. But life isn't like that. So the soldier that got shot said, God protected me. Paul didn't die. If you asked him, he would have said, God has spared my life. God has protected. I know they stoned me, but God protected me. God preserved my life. But the other person who has an expectation that life is a cruise ship or a holiday won't come to the same conclusion. Because why did this happen? I'm not telling you that life is just battles and wars, but most of it is. This world, like you know it today, has been overcome by sin. Although Jesus took the keys back and the authority back and He has given it to His church, this life 
This world is moaning and travailing and groaning, groaning, waiting for the sons of man, the righteous sons of man to take their place. But this world is overcome by sin. Sometimes in, 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 in our bodies we fight cancers and diseases. This world is overcome by sin because the penalty of sin is death. In our streets walk psychopaths, murderers, thieves. Some of them are in government positions. Some of them are your bosses. People that have lost their minds. They are walking free in society today. Because society has over been overwhelmed by sin and the curse of sin. And here there's a precious pole called, called His church. Righteous men and women, the light, the salt of the earth. And they find themselves in the midst of absolute chaos and darkness. And Jesus said, but I want you to remember, it's dark outside. But the light in you has overcome the darkness. Nonetheless... You are surrounded by darkness. Children being kidnapped. Things not going the direction it should because the world is busy burning. And that's why Jesus is coming back to give us a new world and a new heaven. We are going to start over, but not like He started over with Noah and drowned the entire humanity and saved Noah and his family. No, He's now saving those that believe in Him He's going to rapture them out of the church and then He'll pour His wrath out upon humanity. But until then, the church is inside a broken system. We're all soldiers in the army of God. That's what Ephesians 6 is all about because He doesn't give you an umbrella and a tan chair. He's given you a sword and a shield a breastplate and a helmet. Jesus is not handing you a towel and some sunscreen. He's handing you things to fight with. Life is a battle. Life is a war. And in this life, there's casualties. I know it's not sounding very positive, but I want to change expectations. Because those that have a warfare mentality, Satan can't overcome. Those that have a pina colada mentality, they are very easily destroyed because their hearts are growing sick. They get bitter as Christians. Sit in churches, but they're bitter, disappointed, heartbroken. But then there's people that have got scratches on their face and they're more on fire for God than ever. That have been stoned in the city. But when you see them worship, their hands are higher than the rest because God has preserved their life. They are soldiers for the kingdom of God. They are mighty men and mighty women of valor. They are strong people. They're like the people of 300. They've got scars. They've got wounds. They've got their spears. They've got their shields. But they still have faith in a good God because God has protected their life. Say amen this morning. Say, I am a warrior. I am a soldier. In Jesus' name. Satan can attack us. The world can attack us. But they can't defeat us. The world can attack us. But they can't defeat us. That is the promise of God. Not there will be no attacks. There will be attacks. But victory is guaranteed in the battle. Victory is guaranteed in the war. Victory is guaranteed in the trial. Victory is guaranteed in the storm. Victory is guaranteed in the tribulation. Victory is our portion. Blessing is our portion. Prosperity is our portion. We are not going under. We are going over. We are the head and not the tail. We are blessed coming in and blessed going out. Say amen. God protected Paul. God never promised to protect us from trials or tribulations, or attacks. He promised that He will protect us in the trials, tribulations, and attacks. Never to protect us from, but to protect us in. Just trying to build this building causes havoc in the spiritual realm. Because there's amazing people trying to erect 
a temple for God where they can worship God and Satan doesn't like it. But you know what? Too bad, too sad, Satan, it's coming up. You promised that you are going to build a business that's going to fund the end time revival. An attack is coming or it's already there. One thing Satan is guaranteed of is failure. One thing you are guaranteed of is victory. That doesn't make us cocky. That makes us bold. Net as die Heere wil, pastoor, wat hy wil. Dis in sy woord, hy wil. As die Heere wil, sal hy my sien, hy wil jou sien. As die Heere wil, hy wil. Lees die boek, hy wil. If, there's no if. This I will. I will. I'm going to. I have. I have blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Not I'm going to. I get a clap at all, says Jesus. I've given you everything you need. You can't fail. That's why I started by saying I have the mind of Christ. I'm not a nobody. I'm not dumb. I'm not an idiot. I have the mind of Christ. You may feel dumb. Your confession can't align with your feelings. Your confession line aligns with God's Word. I have the mind of Christ. I can figure this thing out. Amen. I have been empowered. I'm not looking for more power. I have power. I have the Holy Ghost. I'm not a looking Christian. I'm a having Christian. Most Christians are looking for things that they already have. Looking for things they already have. Ek wens, ek kan, ek wens, ek kan. Jy kan. Get your mind right. Get your confession right. I know the battle is severe, but you are still guaranteed victory. Fight until you win. No, the Lord is, you fight until you win. The Lord is fighting the battle through you. But people collapse in the storm before the victory even comes. They give up. They haven't lost. They quit. Christians quit before the victory comes. God, where are you? God was, where were you? I needed you in the front lines and you turned your back and ran. Paul says, I discipline my body like a good boxer. Like a good boxer. I land every shot, he says. He doesn't quit in the ring, he hits back. He doesn't turn the other cheek in the ring, he hits back. People don't know the word, but one thing they do know is turn the other cheek. That's all scripture. That's so they're useless in life. Useless in a battle, useless in pursuit, useless in dominance, because they're just turning the other cheek and you only have four cheeks. You can only turn a cheek so many times, then you need to hit back. Amen. Say, I have four and no more. Amen. Made for war. You shoot me, I shoot you. Satan, you're not messing with my family and there's not going to be a fight from my side to you. You smack me, I'll smack you back harder, Satan. You don't have the right to touch my family. You don't have the right to touch my business. Who are you? Who are you, Satan? Who are you? Fish your ma, fish your pa. Hallelujah. Man, I'm... I thought this was going to be a quick session in my notes. It's not. Because I love God, man. I don't have a God that sits on the throne and His hands are tied. I have a strong God. A powerful God. A God that's sovereign. That's in control. A God that has angels that He calls His army. He doesn't call His angels His servants. The God of the of, the, of, of, of heaven's armies, they called him in, 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 in Israel. He's got an army. The Bible says when Jesus comes, he's got to come on a horse like a general and a warrior with an army behind him. Not with, with sheep. He's coming with an army. 
The Jesus you have, or the expectation we sometimes have about a Jesus, is a weak Jesus. Jesus ain't weak. He became meek for our sake, but He's actually very, very strong. The Bible calls Him the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. But pastor, where was God's victory that He promised Paul? I saw He almost died. I saw that business almost died. I saw that Christian almost died. Where's the victory, pastor? In the midst of this battle. The victory. Paul stood up, went to another city, and preached again. Satan thought he's going to learn his lesson, and he did not. Satan thought he taught Paul a lesson. And like a good steward of God, he acted dumb in Satan's presence. You stoned me. You think stoning me is going to stop me? Do you think attacking me is going to stop me? They dragged me out of the city like a dead man. The disciples put me back on my feet. The next morning, I was in another city preaching the same gospel of Jesus Christ. There's not one attack that's going to stop me. Not one trial, not one tribulation. There's no sickness, no disease, no devil in hell that's going to stop me from fulfilling my assignment. And there's no one going to stop you from fulfilling your assignment. Say amen this morning. Hallelujah. I have no time. That sounds ugly. For weak Christians or religious Christians, a religious person is always suffering for Jesus and they never see victory. When I suffer, it's going to be for victory. If I suffer now, I'm gonna have victory. I'm not suffering for 80 years because you think Jesus died and never rose again. I don't have to be in a marriage that's going south for 30 years. I can change it around. God has placed victory in my mouth. He has placed power in my belly and in my heart. He has given me His mind, His Word, and I can turn things around. I don't have to fail for 80 years. But people say, oh, I failed. It was God's plan. God closed the door. God didn't close no doors. You shut it yourself by giving up. Don't give up. Go again. Stand up. Preach again. Stand up, do business again. Stand up, go back in that school again. Stand up, go back in that company again. Don't give up. Go again in Jesus' mighty name. Paul stood up, went to another city and preached. In that city, he raised up leaders. He strengthened the church. Satan couldn't kill him, so he strengthened the church. Satan couldn't kill him. And he went and he strengthened the church. There's nothing that could deviate Paul from his assignment. That's why I said, I kept the faith. I ran the race. I finished the race. Say people quit the race because of an attack. Because they're tired and frustrated. Their hearts are broken. Their hearts are sick. So they quit the race. They were called to be a pastor and they quit before the call. They were called to fund millions into the kingdom and they quit before the the, the, the business went to that level. They quit just before the breakthrough in marriage. They quit. God didn't die on the cross for a bunch of quitters. What Satan thought was his final blow was the salvation of humanity. In all Satan's wisdom, he was an idiot. With all the brain cells Satan had, he couldn't figure out God. He thought he hit Jesus on this cheek and Jesus broke his neck in hell. He had a home home advantage. It was a home game. The Bible says Jesus descended to hell and beat him there in front of the the, the demons. Satan had home advantage and he defeated him there. What do you think will happen in heaven on this earth? The Bible says Satan is under our feet. He's not on your shoulder whispering stuff in your ear. He's under your feet speaking to your heel. Smelling your feet. You are not a quitter. Don't quit. 
Go again. Go again. Try again. Stand up again. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Go again. Go again. Try again. Start again. Move forward again in Jesus' mighty name. Try and kill him and then out of that mess, the church is strengthened, more leaders, more preaching takes place. He's trying to suffocate your business. Well, more money is going to flow in. More people are going to take the empty positions. More people are going to fill the offices because what Satan meant for your harm, God is turning for your good in Jesus' mighty name. Satan attacks you one way and he flees and scatters in several different directions. You don't experience loss when Christ is with you. The battle is real. The battle is intense. I understand that. But if you don't quit and you stand up again, Satan can't stop you. Satan can't stop you. You don't have to wave a flag, blow a ram's horn. The fight is a decision here. I'm not quitting. There's no dumb demon getting me out of my assignment. No religious person has the authority to take me out of my assignment. No ignorant Christian has the right to take me out of my assignment. Doesn't matter what happens around me and to me. I'm going to run my race. I'm going to keep on shooting, keep on taking ground, keep on moving forward. I'll go again. They can stone me. I can feel dead. I'm going to stand up and move again. Some of you are on the ground right now. It's time to stand up. The battle is not over. The battle is not over. I want to read you something before I conclude. Let me just skip off my notes here. I'm going to read you a quick three, three scriptures. Proverbs 24, verse 16, the one we started with. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. There's times where you're going to fall, you're going to stand up again just like Paul. Doesn't matter how severe the blow and the attack was, you're going to stand up again. But the wicked, they will not stand up again. God will make sure that those that touched you will not recover again. You think God won't do that? God is a God that chose sides. He sent His Son for humanity, but He chose to bless the righteous. He didn't. Men zeggen eigenlijk baie pas die volgens die kom by Godsdienst, because religion is something Satan invented to remove power from people. Do you think, well, I can't really speak to God. God has decided everything already. So you're just this robot going through life. It's like God watching a television screen. He's watching a movie that he has seen. It's like God knows what's going to happen tomorrow. God knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But God doesn't. God knows that tomorrow can happen a million things and He knows every route you can take. If you wake up and make your coffee, when you go to work with a good attitude, God knows that can happen, that can happen, that can happen, that can happen. He sees many things at the same time. But God is not sitting on the throne looking down and watching a movie and He knows he knows how this is going to play out. He's waiting for you. For some of you, has designed this amazing life and called you to this amazing life and anointed you for that thing. And many people never fulfill it. They never complete the work, never complete the assignment. They've fallen by the wayside. They've quit. They quit. And that's not God's plan for people to quit. They quit. They quit. It was never God's plan. When God, when I look at LJ and when I look at Leah, I see a bright future for them, for them. But their future is not dependent upon me, but on their choices, who they marry, who they fall in love with. If I don't, you know, yeah. I'm going to like them by God's grace. I'm just saying I have a future for them, but their decisions dictate their future. I can't intervene. I can raise them in the, in, the, in the ways of God and bring them to church, but I can't dictate their future for it. Same with God, because the number one gift He has given us is free will. Free will is a precious, precious gift. John 16, 33, this is Jesus. These things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Um, as ek preek, loop so min as moendlik rond, asjeblief. Ek gaan julle baie mooi vraag, so min as moendlik. I'm not preaching for three hours, I've been preaching for 40 minutes. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Even if I lose everything, no one can take my soul. 
I have eternity in me. Death, where is your sting? I can't fail. James 1 verse 2 to 4, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. When you go through these trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. In Psalm 23 verse 1 to 5, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, as I walk through the trial, as I walk through the battle, as I walk through the tribulation, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That rod was to keep things and predators away from the sheep. That rod is to strike. Shepherds weren't these old men needing a kitty. That thing was their weapon. So Jesus is telling us, He says, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when I look at you and I see your rod and your staff, it comforts me. Because someone is about to get a beating from Jesus. Someone is about to get a beating from God. I can see my God. He's got his sword with him. He's got his shield with him. He walks with me through the valley of the shadow of death. In Jesus' mighty name. When Satan comes against you, to conclude, he always speaks in finality. That's his greatest weapon. Because if he can make it sound final, that can produce fear. So he'll say things like this. You'll never get up again. That was the last straw. This was your last chance. Jy het nou te ver gegaan. Jy gaan nooit weer herstel nie. God will never be able to restore what you have done. The marriage is finished. Business is finished. You're done. Just quit. Just give up. That's how Satan speaks. He comes and he whispers. He says, this is the lot. 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 It's too late. Satan says, but with God, nothing is ever too late. And with God, nothing is ever final. God has the final word. God has the final say. God will give the final blow. God will have the final say. Not Satan. You may lay there on the ground. A leopard crawl in your when we go through trials, as tough as it is, that voice always comes in our subconscious mind and says, maybe you must just quit. And you know what's the scary part? It feels logical to do. It feels like the right thing. Misschien moet ek nou maar net opgee en kry die drama uit my leven uit. Misschien moet ek maar net opgee en trek opgee en, and find peace in some other city, in some other country, in some other island. I'm going to look for peace. I'm done with battles. But if you think for one moment Satan won't attack you on the island, in the another city, in your marriage, you're making a great mistake. Satan has the gift of patience. So does God. But Satan will lie there in the leaves like a snake. He'll camouflage himself and he will wait until he can strike. He's like a python that grabs and then wraps himself around you and then starts to squeeze. The tighter it gets, the less you can breathe until all that's left is the corpse. Soul is gone. The spirit of that man is gone. The breath is out. There's many people walking around today like zombies. They are a bunch of corpses. It's like Satan squeezed life out of them. They went too far with their drugs. They went too far with their abuse. They went too far with their alcohol. They went too far with their money. They went too far with their ego. And Satan got them and tried to kill them. But even while the corpse, you feel like nothing lives in me. It feels like everything's dead. You feel depressed and anxious. You have no hope for tomorrow. People came and stole that joy from you. 
The Bible says, Lazarus may be dead for four days, but he will live again. The valley of bones, it's all it was, was a valley of dry bones. And God said, prophesy. You can't say what you see. He says, prophesy to these bones. Prophesy to their marriage. Prophesy to that business. You can't say what you see. You can't say what you feel. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can't quit on your dream. You can't quit on your call. You need to prophesy over your future. And some of you here feels dead. It's time to stand up again. Tell yourself this morning, I'm gonna stand up again. I'm gonna walk again. I'm gonna fight again. I'm gonna get back into the boxing ring again. I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna be tough. I'm gonna be bold. I'm gonna be courageous. Even if I, if I fail at everything, one thing I'll never do is give up on God's promises and give up on God's word. I say to God, amen. I say to God, God, I heard this from Pastor Rick Godwin when he said at one dream week, he said he wants to live a life so full on that when he's dead, even if he failed at everything that he, he tried, he wants his wife to stand at his, at his um, funeral and say, and look at the, the kiss and say, at least the sucker tried. At least he tried. He wasn't a dead man walking. At least he tried. He tried. He never gave up. At least he tried. My man was strong. He tried. He never gave up. He fails at one thing. He moves on to the next. He never gave up. He had a thousand ways of trying to, to develop a light bulb. He never gave up. This thing is going to work. Who could buy crook? I'm not giving up. Don't give up. Don't ask God, where are you? Where's the victory? Where's the protection? It's not time for questions like that. We are surrounded with darkness. We're in the middle of a war. This place is not our home. But we're not gonna be white knuckled Christians just holding on until we breathe out our last. No, while we are in this world, we're gonna shine our light. We're gonna make our name heard. We're gonna make an impact. We're going to stand up and fight and no devil in hell is going to stop us. Come on, jump to your feet and give Jesus a shout of praise. Come on, shout the name of Jesus. Shout, I am blessed. Shout, I have victory. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I have the victory. I have the victory. I have the victory. I am blessed. I am blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to take your seat this morning. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. You are sitting here today and you know that I was speaking to you. You feel dead. You feel hopeless. Your heart has become sick. You've been through battles. You felt you've lost. You've been through trials. You feel like the best decision is to give up. But this morning you heard the gospel, the good news, that Jesus died in your place. He rose again on the third day. He's alive. He's a warrior. Jesus is a fighter. He's a king. He's a Lord. He's a leader. And He came and gave us the keys of life and death to bound and to loose, to open and to close. The Jesus I have come to love is a Jesus that lifts our heads, that anoints our head with oil and make our cup run over. It's a Jesus that doesn't give up, a Jesus that doesn't quit, a Jesus that doesn't look the other way, a Jesus that fights with us gives us everything we need. I pray this morning that boldness and courage will come back to life and faith will be resurrected in your heart. But there's no life and no victory without Jesus. You can work very hard 
and lose your soul. You can be very successful and lose your soul. What does it help if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul? It's time to come back to Jesus. Don't be bitter at God, bitter at the church, bitter at the pastor, bitter at the Bible, or bitter at life. You can have a new beginning. You may sit there in your seat and feel like, I feel like Paul, I've been stoned, I'm half dead. Well, be like Paul this morning and stand up again and move on, go again. God has given you victory. So while every head is bowed, every eye closed, and you say, Pastor, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to start over. Pastor, I get a new beginning. A new season. I get a new blood to the side. I get a new hoofstuk begin. I need to start over. I want to give my life to Jesus. I knew him once. I drifted away because of life and its battles. But I want to come back home like that lost son. I want to come back to you. I want to come back to you. I miss the ice. I miss my pa. I miss for Jesus. I want to come back home. If that is you, while every head is bowed, every eye closed, and you want to give your life to Jesus, then please lift your hands up wherever you are seated. Lift it high into the air. Thank you. Thank you. I want to come back, Pastor. I want to give my life to Jesus. Lift it high that I can see, man. One, two, three. Lift it up high, high, high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to Thank you. Thank you. I want to come back to Jesus. I'm choosing Jesus this morning. I'm choosing life this morning. I'm going to go again. Stand up again. I'm going to try again. If you've raised your hand, you can put it back down. I want to ask you one more time. If that is you, then don't try and delay. It's none of their business. It's time for you to say yes. So one more time, if that is you, lift your hands high up into the air that I can see who I can pray for. Look, 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 look. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They're in the back, thank you, thank you. You're in the middle, am I right? Thank you. Look, all platos can see. I'm coming back to Jesus. I'm starting over. I can work with him. And he says, no. In Jesus' mighty name. I want all of us to please stand to our feet. You are that person God spoke to. The person that's coming back home and starting over is going to stand up again. It's going to grab Jesus by the hand and going to walk with Christ. You want to make a recommitment. If that is you this morning, you raised your hand or you did not, but you know Jesus spoke to you. It's not time to run away. It's time to run to Jesus. I want to ask you to be bold and brave. If you've raised your hand up or not, please leave your seat. Come down the aisle. Come stand here at the altar. I want to pray with you. Come, 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 come. Touch this young generation. Touch this young generation. Out of the ashes and into your glorious life. Come, come, come to Jesus. A new life, a new beginning. Come to Jesus. It's a new beginning.
on, give Jesus a big hand clap, all of you, come on. It's all about souls. Amen. God has a plan for your life. Young and old, black and white, God has a plan for your life. God will never give up on you. He'll always be there to pick you up from the ground, to give you new strength, a new life, a new hope, a new future, fresh vision. Jesus, I have come to know, is not a God that gives up ever. I want to celebrate you for being brave and bold, standing and walking down these long aisles to come and give your life to Jesus. We have nothing to be ashamed of. Jesus died publicly. We give our lives to Jesus publicly. I want you to put your hand upon your heart and pray this prayer with me with all the faith that you have. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe with all of my heart that you are the Son of God, that you walked on this earth and died on that cross. You died for me, for all my sins and all my shame. Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Wash me clean with your blood. And Father, I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. Jesus, I believe that you're alive. Take my life and give me yours. Take my life and do something with it. I'm born again and I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. By faith. The confession of your faith. You've been saved. We want to give you a Bible if you don't have one. We want to give you something that you can take home on this journey. So just for a few minutes, please turn to my right, your left. There's amazing people waiting for you. In Jesus' name. Come on, see or see. Come, 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 come. Come on, see our seat. take your seats this morning family we have a baby dedication can parents Palace and Oba King please come to the front Martin and Linda bring your families with Moses and Evodia Quentin and Paulina and Palace and Chuochong Call the, chain, uh, the child's name, the chain. It's a mixture of child and name. When I call the child's name, you can just lift it up for everyone to see, okay? Parents, Palace and Obaking, the child. Lewe, Niwe. Look how beautiful she is. Blessing Mufako. Born on the 11th of October, 2023 in Potchefstroom. The meaning of her name is God has given unto 
uh, unto us a blessing. And the scripture we dedicate her with. You see how beautiful she is. It's the mom. Psalm 127 verse 3 to 5. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. Amen. And parents, Martin and Linda, and Luke, Adrian van Staden. Born on, 19th, on the 19th of May, 2023. The meaning of his name is light giving. The scripture we dedicate him with is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. May God grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with a might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints What is its width and length and depth and height? To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. And Moses, in Avodia, a monthly. Look at that beauty. Look at that tie. Tie and sandals. Born on the 7th of May 2022 in the Northern Cape, Hartswater. Here is Hartswater, a fountain of living water, meaning of his name. He is powerful. And the scripture we dedicate him with is Luke chapter 2, verse 14. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. Child number two. No, I skipped the verse, uh, entire page here. Quentin and Paulina. Child one is Matthew Janssen. Where's Matthew? Born on the 17th of September 2014 in Kimberley. Meaning of his name is gift of God. The scripture we dedicate him with is Joshua 1 verse 7 to 9. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law. My servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And Bryce Janssen, your turn, boy. Born on the 17th of September 2014 in Kimberley. Meaning of his name is son of a nobleman. That's you, Dad. That's you. The scripture we dedicate him with is Deuteronomy 28, verse 12 to 13. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouses of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And then Xavier Luke Janssen, that's you, born on the 31st of August, 2018. Meaning of his name is New House, bringer of light, bringer of light to the new house, the Janssen house. Amen. The scripture we dedicate him with is Matthew 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it on the bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Then Alexis Grace Janssen. The fourth one was a girl. God is merciful. The God of miracles. Born on the 12th of June, 2023 in Portchestrum. Some of you also have three young boys, but you gave up too soon. 
Born on the 12th of June, 2023 in Potsdam, meaning of a name, defender, protector, and favor, blessing. Scripture we dedicated with is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into wonderful light. Amen. Did I skip a child here? Valesa, I'm so sorry, but you have another child. <laughs> These papers were mixed a little bit. We saved best for last, and all the other parents disagreed. <laughs> Look how beautiful she is in a, in a beautiful dress. Born on the 26th of October, 2018 in Portchester, Bonolo. Meaning of her name is humble, kind, soft, gentle, caring, and loving. The scripture we dedicate to with is Isaiah 54, verse 13 to 14. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Amen. I want all of you to quickly turn around and show your beautiful children to this loving congregation. Family, I want you to stretch out your hands to all these children and I want you to declare a prayer over the families and over their beautiful children in Jesus' mighty name. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. The heart of a lion. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Father, declare blessing. The other pastors can also start praying. I'll join you then. I declare a blessing over the family. I thank you, Father. They will have enough wisdom and understanding to raise this beautiful young boy in your house and in your ways. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Anoint his head with oil and make his cup run over. we set these young men apart for the Lord's use anoint this beautiful girl for the crown of her head to the soles of her feet soft gentle spirit Father I declare blessed, blessed, blessed blessed in Jesus mighty name strength and wisdom Father to the parents strength and wisdom wisdom that will go beyond understanding of their years this family Blessed, 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 blessed. Blessed, 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 blessed. Set her apart, Father. Set her apart for your kingdom. Mark her with your grace and your fire. Mark as your own. Write her name, Father. The Lamb's Book of Life. Write your name on her form. In Jesus' mighty name. These children belong to the Lord. They are blessed by the Lord, protected by the Lord. They are victorious in Christ. Whatever Satan, one more girl, come on, Jesus. You see, you've inspired them. 
Amen. Father, we declare them place, place, place coming in and place going out. They will be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Whenever Satan comes against them one way, he will flee in several different directions. They are blessed, 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 blessed. And the church said, Amen. Come on, give them a big hand clap. You guys can take your seats and we'll give you your certificates afterwards.